Hi everyone, my name is Chevron Edwards and today we will be making a book. Now the book that we will be making looks something like this. Alright, so it can be used for a journal cover, it can be used for an instructional aid, or it can be used for um, anything else. Alright, so here are two examples. Alright, so I will be walking you through step by step how to make this book. These were made for myself or educational purposes so i'll be taking you through the steps now all right so you're going to put on your screen all the items that you need so stay tuned and let's get started this is earth tone music production Alright, let's go over the items that we need again. So we need an eraser, a sharpener, pencil, stencil knife to be sharpened with a pair of scissors, a ruler, a meter stick. If you don't have a meter stick, that's fine. You can use the ruler. Cutting mat. If you have any cutting mat, you can cut on a piece of board. If you don't want a piece of board, you can cut on a piece of glass. Alright, if not, tile normally works fine. Just avoid getting in between the tools. Alright, so these are the tools that we need. Now let's take a look at the materials that we need. So, materials that we will need to do. Shoelace. Piece of fabric. About one yard. One yard long and approximately 12 inches wide. Uh, paper, two sheets, color of your choice, and a black. And finally, our straw board or hard board or backing board, whichever you call it. But preferably get the thick one. Alright, so now that we know all that we need, Okay, so I'm going to put the dimensions on your screen at this time, and then we are going to get into it. So the dimensions that we'll be working with are 16 by 12, 16 inches by 12 inches. We're going to cut two of those. And then we're gonna cut 16 by 2. Alright, so let's do that right now. You want to ensure that when you're using your meter ruler or your ruler, you're using it properly. Remember, you're supposed to start from the zero and not from one. If you do that, it's going to be at least short. So you have to start from the zero, which is here. The very tip that marks zero. Alright? Let's go. So because I'm going to do 16 by 12, I'm just going to cut draw a line that is 32 inches long. Because you know that 16 is 32 inches. Simple maths. Alright, so the easiest way to do it is to mark from the edge and mark at the 32 mark. When you do that, it's a lot easier to ensure that you get straighter lines that way. Alright? Mark again. After you've made those two marks, then use your ruler to connect them. You can connect right across the page, it doesn't matter. You're only going to cut where it's necessary. Alright? This is what I have thus far. So now when you find 16, so you'll be in the middle, I'm going to do the same thing. Alright? 16, mark up the 16. It's a book. That's why it's important to have all the tools in place at hand that way you don't waste time looking for your tools. Alright? 
Jogo? Now we are moving to mark like a second 16 inch mark. Alright? So here we go. So we connect it. Alright? That's it. Alright, here we go. So here's my second line. I'll replace the pictures. Just to ensure that we're not missing anything. Alright? So let me get those pictures here. Alright. Alright. Here we go. Alright. So next now we're gonna do the 12 inch side. So we can shift. Then do the same thing, measure 12 inches. All right, there we go. 12 inches again. All right, you want to ensure that you put the mark directly beside the mark that is on the ruler. If you're not looking over the ruler, it will not be accurate. So you have to ensure that you're looking over it and not beside it. Right here we go. All right. So these are the two sections that we're working with. We're going to do the two inches so that you can use a small one. The same principle just mark from the line to ensure that you're accurate. All right, there we go. We'll switch back to our meter rule. Alright, so I'm going to write these measurements on so that you have a better idea. We can see. Right. So it's 16 by 12 inches. Right. So again, we're going to take photos for it to be able to see clearer because I want to ensure that everybody's getting it. Right. Okay. There we go. Alright, so the next step is. Want to be a little bit more challenging, but if done properly, All right, so now we're gonna cut some cardboard. Now there are some safety precautions for doing this. Please ensure that the blade 
or box profile most persons problem that is very dangerous. Alright? So whenever you're using your box cutter, ensure that you cut away from your body. Alright? Also, most persons don't know this, but this little piece at the end is to actually break the blade to ensure that you get a nice sharp clean edge. So if your edge is worn down, I recommend that you break it so that you can get a nice fresh edge so that cutting it is not easy. Alright? Okay. Here it goes. So we want to cut using our full length of our arms and not just our wrist. Alright? So you want to cut from the shoulder coming back down. Alright? So the first mark that you make is a mark. You're not trying to cut through the first time, you just need to mark the line so that you create a groove for the blade to follow through. When you do it that way, the second rule is easier. You just mark until it comes apart. Alright, so first time you go, use the blade to make a mark. Alright, so watch carefully. Watch, I'm not cutting towards my body, I'm going to be cutting away from the side. So you position it beside your body. Ensure that when you cut, you go that way. You want to cut this way because the nice slips can be very dangerous. Alright? So here it goes. So right now I'm not applying much pressure. All I'm trying to do is follow the line. Once I follow the line, I make the mark, then I go through the second time and apply. That is my first mark. Okay, I'm going to again. I'm applying pressure this time. Here we go again. Depending on the thickness of your hardball, you might need to do it a couple of times. Nothing is wrong with that. Doesn't mean you're weak. Just means that you're patient and you're actually getting it done. There we go. All right. So that's the first section. Now the second section. Same principle applies. Mark the first time and follow through. You notice I'm marking multiple times because that way is the only way I will get a clean, nice, fresh, straight cut. Alright? Can't do this in a rush. Just take your time. Make sure once you're doing it, it's been done properly. If it doesn't come apart naturally, that means it's not cut. Alright? So here's our first piece. So this is our 2 inch by 16 inch. Alright, so we need two of these. This is a 16 inch by 12 inch. We also need two of these. Alright? This is what I have left. And I'm going to be cutting again. Alright? Same procedure. Marking, keep cutting. All 
right. Second, 16 by 12. Second, 16 by 2. All right? So now we're going to put this aside. We're going to need it later. In fact, we're going to need it very soon because it takes us to our next step. All right? So 16 by 2, you want to ensure that they're the same size. They're not the same size. We're going to run into issues with them. So ensure that they're the same size. Sometimes we are a few 7 millimeters off. Not too obvious. Don't pressure yourself about it. All right. Very same size. That's good to go. Okay. So we're going to be cutting this little section into some strips because we're going to be using it to, to um spread the glue. Or well, try this you can even break it if you wish. That works too. However, you feel comfortable. Alright? Alright, so I have all of this is the So what we need making is we need to cut our piece of cloth. Hold, ensure that the centers are in, the edges are in line, sorry. We use our scissors to slip. Once we slip, alright. Once we have done that, we're going to remove our cutting mat from out of our way because we are through with it for now. Alright? Alright guys, so now we're going to be making our cover. Now it's really a simple process, but you have to take your time, you have to be patient, and you have to be neat at the same time. Alright? So for this process we're going to need our glue. We're going to need one piece of the 2 by 16, one piece of the 16 by 12. All right, one piece of the clock, and a little piece of this. Display. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to lay out the pieces over the cloth to ensure that the cloth is the right size. All right, you want to ensure that you have at least uh, six to seven inches of cloth to fold over when you are through. So you can keep it close to the edge to accommodate depending on how wide your cloth is. Alright? So I will be taking a photo and posting, attaching it to the video as well so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So here we go. Alright? So now Primer glue. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be flipping the pieces in the position that they are to ensure that we get them neat and in the right place. Right? So you use this little piece to spread the glue. We're going to spread it as evenly as possible. Right? Nice and even. On both pieces, okay. All right. so it needs half of a centimeter, or let not, not half of a centimeter, in a quarter of a centimeter space in between these two pieces so that the book can open and fold.
where you want to get all of the edges because you don't want any bubbles, any areas lifting when you're through. All right, so we take the first piece, you flip it over, right back where you took it from. All right, with the same amount of space in between. Press, take the second piece, flip it over, same thing, right back where you took it from, ensure that they're in line with each other. All right? And then you press it down. Right? You have done that, then you turn over everything. And then you just use your hands, ensure that they're clean. Press. You don't want any creases, you don't want any waves. You need all of it to be neatly sitting. It's going to affect the aesthetics and the overall quality of your book. Alright? Alright? Alright. We should have this. Alright guys, so here's our next step. So what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be creating a neatly folded edge. Alright, for this step, it's going to be time consuming, but we're going to ensure that we do it neatly because neatness is what we're going for. As artists, we want to ensure that we're neat and thorough. Alright, so we're going to be using a lot of glue for this step. So follow carefully. First, we're going to cover this entire section with glue. Perhaps a light thin coat of glue to ensure that no fabric is left loose because that will affect the overall quality of the book. Alright, so we want to have a rug close by to wipe up any spills, any messes. Alright, and still have to keep your hands clean. Alright, so for this section, we're going to need a fresh piece of cardboard. Want to spread our glue. All right, let's go. You want to keep it nice, thin, and consistent. All right, you don't want too much glue in one place. You don't want not enough in one place. You want it nice and just right. All right. You have to move quickly because you know the glue has drying time. You want to keep it quickly. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Alright, so the sooner you cover the surface, you will flood the surface so that you have just enough to get the job done. Alright? There I go. Alright? I think I have enough to get the job done. I'm going to snap a photo of this for you guys to see. Alright? There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take one edge, we're going to ensure that it forms a nice right angle over the corner. Alright, I'll show you that. Rough that soon. Just to ensure that I get this thing properly. Right? Same thing with the next edge. Right? You don't want it to come over too much. You want a little space at the tip. You want it to be a right angle. Right, there we go. Right, so we Alright, so for you. Alright, so you want the lines to run parallel to each other at this point in time. Good, alright. So now we apply another set of glue. The coat of glue quickly. Alright. Spread quickly. Alright, so last set of glue we're applying. 
Das ist sehr cool. Let's go. Nice done. Alright. Well, this is not properly your book will not be firm. And we want to get our books. Our journal is nice and firm, right? Right. Over. That. Over again. Over that. All the way. Alright. So if you don't catch it here, you can catch it at the end of the video in the slideshow. Alright? Or I'll just put another video. Put the link in another video for you. Right? And all you do, you repeat the same steps for the other cover. Right? Now this is going to need some time to dry. So we're going to give it some time to dry and then we're going to cut the other pieces. Alright? I recommend you give it about an hour to dry. Ensure that it's nicely done so that it doesn't shift or move when you start working on it. Alright? Alright guys, so for our next step, we're going to be cutting our cartridge paper. Now most cartridge paper can do this. All you need to do is cut it in half. Alright? So ensure that the edge is lined up. Piece at the corner. You see the next side, make sure the edges line up. Piece at the For this section, you can use either a stencil knife or your ruler to draw the to cut the line. But for the sake of the video, I'll use a stencil knife because it's much quicker. You can't do that. This is it. No problem with that. All right? The top paper is rolling up in time. Hold it opposite way. Hold the fight. Release it. Then again, it will be important to just this section. The next cartridge paper, we're going to be using the black. And for the black, we want it to add a nice clean finish to the inside part of our cover. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be cutting it in 15 and a half inches by 11 and 3 quarter inches so that it forms a nice border on the inside of the book. Alright? So 
over this, I recommend that you fold the paper in half. Alright. Edge to edge, like we did with the color. What you're going to do now, you're going to mark your measurements from the factory edge of the paper. Alright? Sure that it is nicely creased, or you can do it from the foliage edge. Anyone that's choose. Remember, mark two points on the paper and connect it. All right, that's the best way to get your measurements accurate. Alright, you've done that. I'm going to do the next side, the 16 side. So we're going to put it at 15 and a half. While you're doing this, ensure that your lines are accurate. If you don't have accurate lines, it will affect the overall look of your book. Alright, so concentrate. Try to ensure that you check your measurements, double check your measurements, and make sure that your book is neat and perfect. Alright, so for this next step, so you're doing this. Alright, take a photo for you. You can see exactly what's happening. You can use the stencil knife again or the scissors if you wish. For me, I will be going with the stencil knife as it's quicker. But due to how difficult the line is to see on the stencil knife, using the stencil knife, I recommend that you go with the, you know, the scissors on this one. Because the line is not so easy to see on the black paper. Alright. Oops, we need to try to pay attention to that, please. Alright, so what I'll be doing now is just cutting in the middle. Nice mark here. Make sure that I don't fall down the way. Right. Well, it's always good to play it safe, guys. Don't try to be a hero. You need to use a line, use a line. No judgment in that. So here we are. Alright, notice way smaller than the first. Okay. Alright. Two hours later. Alright, so now we're ready for the final two steps. Alright, so now we need our cover. Let's try it. Flexing nicely. Alright. So it should look like this, right? So, first things first, we're going to get our colored cartridge paper. 
Mine is blue, of course. All right. We're going to ensure that we get this in the center of the blue paper. All right. So, point to note do not let the paper overlap where the book will fold. All right. You don't want that happening. You want that approximately half a centimeter away from the corner to prevent the paper from moving from wear and tear. All right. So you're going to ensure that the book is center and then shift half centimeters away on both sides. All right. Once you do that, you use your pencil and you mark where the book is. The reason for this is because we're going to lift it. We want to ensure that we put it back in the right place. All right. So here we go. Fresh piece of hardboard again and be spreading the glue. Alright. Alright. There we go. Alright, now you want it to be even, but you don't want it to be too wet because if it gets too wet, you're gonna have it making the paper curly. You don't want the paper to curl. Alright. Everywhere to be covered. Everywhere to be covered. All right. Edge. Once I've done that, put my cover back down. Make sure the place is clean. Do so. Sometimes the glue gets away. Make sure that it is clean or it will smudge the cover. All right. Nice. So we look for our marks. The marks are on this side. within the marks. There we go. All right, flip over paper, work it on. You want no ear bubbles, no ear pockets, everywhere what you want. Getting a photo for you guys again. The next step now, we're going to do something similar to what we did before in this section of the book. We're going to do the same thing. Right, so we're going to bring over 
you want to crease at a right angle again. All right. All right, the benefit about the benefit with this part is that the paper has memory, so it will stay when you set it. All right. Well, all right. We have done that to do the same fold over. All you're, doing that, all you're doing at this point in time is just creasing the paper so that the next step is easier when you're applying these. Alright? There. Okay. So this is what I have for you. All creased up. So, we bring it right back out. You apply glue. Alright? And they use a small piece for this part. We'll be working with a small area. Alright, so we'll put a little glue in the center. Here we go. Remember, it's paper, so you don't want too much. Alright. Wanted to sit down nice. Right, there we go. Alright, so let's switch back to the bigger part now. Yes, guys, you need a lot of new forms. Make sure you don't miss anywhere or that section will lift in your paper. Alright? There we go. There we go. Okay. This paper now. We just follow suit. Hit the best side of the cartridge paper and you apply glue to the back of it. Your workspace is clean, guys. It's not clean. You're going to regret it. So keep cleaning your workspace at all times. 
Also, I'm applying directly to the paper this time. This next section, those who might not be able to estimate, I recommend that you mark before you proceed. If it's wrong, with that. That is the best thing to do. Mark it before you. All right, so here, see this nice little border around. All right, if it goes over here, no problem, just use your stencil knife, just gently slit away that excess. All right, so just cover one of two. All right, just see a little glue coming up. It's normal, it's the glue coming up between the creases. That's all right. Get yourself a moisture, just wipe off the excess. Cover one complete. Simply repeat the step for the next cover and you'll be finished. All right, so I'll be posting the completed book at the end of the video. If you have any more questions, leave it in the comment section or you can send me an email at chevronegorit at gmail.com. I'll put it on the screen for you. Any questions, you can shoot me the questions there as well. All right, so this is part one of making the book. Next section, we have to wait until this is completely dry for us to pierce the holes, put in the shoelace. All right, so we'll go for that next video. Send me your photos, let me see where you are, and let me know how well you did. All right, all the best. Good luck, guys.